everybody, Sean James here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the cabin. I am going on another road trip into town and it's going to be a wild one, I think. The snow is just keeps coming down. We got, uh, what, six, seven, maybe even eight inches overnight last night and maybe another four inches today. So another 10 centimeters. You're going, going to end up with probably, I would say, 30 centimeters or a foot at least of fresh new snow. And we got a whole bunch the last few days before that even. So it's starting to accumulate, but I need to make this trip into town. I've been uh, talking about uh, canoes for a while. I'm finally getting my new canoe. So I'm going to uh, meet up at the factory and talk to the guys there about how my canoe was made and uh, what other canoes they have in the lineup there and what they're working on. So oh, I'd like to show you that. So let's head into town and then uh, the boys are actually gonna come back with me and deliver the canoe to the site here because I don't have a setup right now to carry a canoe on my truck and I can't uh, dig my trailers out quite buried but I uh, want to get this canoe in, in my hand so that I'm ready to go by spring I need to do a few things to outfit it to make it a little bit more personalized right, just pulling out here roads are plowed yesterday by the looks of it not today Probably won't get around to it until later today after this stops. So my road was bad, but this one's actually pretty decent. This is the, I guess you can call it the main road coming out of the village. This ends as well. Anything out my way comes to dead ends eventually. So, not a high priority for plows to get out this way because there's not many people out here but it's also no through traffic it's only people that live out here or are visiting hey everybody and welcome back to the cabin so I'm here with Scott from Smith uh, canoes and we're back at the factory like I mentioned back in the cabin and uh, we just did a factory tour very cool to see the whole process got to see the mold that this boat started off in and watch to go watch a similar model go all the way through the process till we got to this point so this is the Swift Prospector 14 it's a solo boat we have center canoe or center seat here uh, with multiple or two different positions that I can lower it down into so I could use it sort of a, as a pack boat. I don't like a pack boat as much as I like a traditional canoe. So, so many times I like to sit up and have a higher vantage point. It's better for hunting for one thing, uh, fishing. I don't like having my legs spread out in front of me. You land a fish and you drop it in your lap and it's thrashing around with hooks in it. I like to be sitting up high or on my knees so that I can control that situation a bit better. Also for filming and photography I find it better. But there's times that you like that I like that extra stability and by lowering the seat into that low position and, and paddling with a double blade kayak paddle I can uh, be much more stable and quicker. So I, I really love this. That's why I switched this. I mentioned that um, I really liked my Kiwi in 14 didn't have this lower position so I couldn't um, get into a really stable position very easily when I was encountered heavy wind or waves. This gives me the flexibility but the bigger thing is now when I bought that uh, Q8 and 14 I didn't have a dog so now that Callie's here she can fit into this boat a little bit easier with me and because it's wider the main difference a little bit deeper I think. Yeah. It is a little bit deeper, a little bit wider, uh, definitely more volume. Uh, you're definitely going to have room for the dog and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the video now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> She's a little antsy still on the canoe, that's why I usually take out the wooden canvas. But this is going to work I think for that and I'm looking forward to the spring. With all the snow we've had this year, we're going to get a ton of water going through the system. So, uh, so this is Scott, <laughs> by the way, from Swift. Uh, Scott, I think you sold my, me my first boat too. Yeah, yeah, we've got a, a longer history, I guess. Um, originally, I met Sean years ago. You were a customer who came in, and uh, I sold him on that Q8 and 14 solo canoe, which you've seen in videos, and I think has served him pretty well. And uh, we've always kept in touch, and I've seen you around the store. Um, and so we just kind of got to a level where Sean needed something new, and we've been working on some new stuff that was going to work pretty well. So we collaborated a little bit. Um, some of this boat has some very new technology uh, that isn't even out yet. Uh, the laminate being one thing, the decals uh, are another thing that we've never done before that's got a great response. So 
Um, Sean basically came to me and, and as he described, he wanted something that was versatile, uh, something you could fish with, something you could hunt with, something you could bring the dog with. This new Prospector 14 covers all those bases. Uh, and then as well, we just tweaked it a little bit for, for what he wanted, a, a subtle color, something that blends in when he's out on the water. Um, so we did a blacked out with a subtle interior cloth. We've got the, the reflective decals as well. So I, uh, I hope it works pretty well for you. I'm pretty confident that it will. Well, and uh, we're excited to, to see some footage. Yeah, same here. But just so you know, back uh, three, three and a half years ago, I started researching canoes. I had a wooden canvas and I had boats. I was mostly into power boating actually at the time. When I decided to go back to canoes, I researched and looked into every canoe company out there in North America. And I settled on Swift after doing all that research because the quality, the the weight of the boats, the uh, the service is excellent, and it's local for me. So I, I knew I made a good choice at the time. Now I picked a, a Sage Green. Is that what it's called? Sage uh, Barracuda. Sage yes. Barracuda. Yeah. yeah, which my daughters made fun of. Said it looked like uh, they call it sea foam green. <laughs> it wasn't the most masculine boat in the water. So <laughs> this is a bit of a change to go into something a little bit more sleek and. Uh, I would call it a little bit more masculine for me. <laughs> well, it, it's definitely sleek. It's it's definitely going to blend in. And your your old boat, I mean, it was it was great in photographs. You could yeah, definitely was, pick yeah. it out of the surroundings, but uh, it wasn't the most subtle thing if you were trying to be subtle well, in the wilderness. So yeah, I did try to sneak through. Uh, people would recognize <laughs> that boat. I couldn't get yeah, away. Yeah, I could see you across the lake. Yeah, right yeah. No at least it was better. fast though. So. <laughs> anyway. so yeah, I appreciate uh, the the tour here. It's nice to see the whole process here at the factory. And uh, looking forward to, we're going to get go back to the cabin, so if you want to follow us, we'll go back to the cabin with this thing. Like I said, as soon as that snow melts, it's still snowing out there right now, it's, we're going to get it, basically have another foot. And uh, those waterways are going to be flowing good in the spring. So basically, when you're in a boat like that, of that width, it's, it's a little bit wider than a traditional kayak, and you're sitting up in the boat, so your clearance to the water and the width of the boat just has to be factored in. And it basically just means you need a longer paddle than you would normally see in a traditional kayak. So these two paddles, they do paddles in centimeters. Normally with a kayak or a flat water kayak, they're usually 210 to 230 centimeters. When you get into pack boats or solo canoes, then you get up into like 240 to 260. These two guys are both 260, I believe. Um, and this is about the, the longest you'll see without doing like a custom order type okay. paddle. Um, these are both Werner's. Werner makes the best paddles in the business. Um, they're based out of the U.S. They're made in Washington State. They make like primo, high-end, long-lasting, um, ultra-performance paddles. Um, and this is really the cream of the crop. So this is the lightest carbon fiber paddle that they do. It's called a Caliste. Yeah. And like as far as you know, matching with your boat, mm -hmm. that's the same. Same stuff, same you know, black carbon weave as the outside of this boat, mm -hmm. and that's about as light as you'll see out there. They're foam injected in both ends, which gives it a little bit of buoyancy. It actually helps you pull through the water a little bit better. But that would be like kind of the nicest option out there. Um, that's a demo paddle that we've had in the shop, but um, that's that would be the the ideal perfect paddle really if you wanted to kind of match the yep. the look of the boat a bit. Yep. Um, they also do. Um, a fishing style paddle, um, which has just got some minor differences and you can see in the decals and so on. These guys are a little bit more robust, it's still a carbon shaft, but they do a, fiber a fiberglass blade. Mm -hmm. It's a hair heavier, a couple of grams. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit tougher if you're pushing off rocks a little bit, you're less yeah. likely to chip it or scrape it up a bit. Um, Joe Robinette uses that same model of paddle. Um, it's for Werner, it's probably the best value paddle okay. because it's a, it's still on the lighter weight scale. Mm -hmm. You don't have to baby it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they also do those in a lot of different colors. So we're in a bit of a situation because you're both black. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, when you're getting into right. full carbon fiber, you're getting a black paddle. Yeah. When you go into like a fiberglass blade, there's red, okay. green, yellow, you name it. Mm -hmm. So that blade um, dimension's almost identical. Right? It is. It is the same, essentially. Yeah. So yeah. these. This one's foam injected. This one has an insert here, mm -hmm. uh, but it's the same shape. And that shape okay. is what they call a low angle paddle. Mm -hmm. um, whitewater paddlers have shorter, wider blades because they do a more aggressive vertical stroke. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you're flat water kayaking, you tend to be a little bit lower. Uh, sometimes you hear the term lily dipping, but it's, yeah, that's yeah. kind of a, a generic term. Um, but this would basically be a flat water. Uh, touring paddle. So one other thing I mentioned um, 
liking the different seat positions. That's why I went with a traditional canoe seat that you can be lowered into a backboat style. Joe and I did a trip two, year, two, or three, two years ago, I think it was, down the Nipissing River in the high end, like near the headwaters. And it is so alder choked that there's time, times that you can't even get through until they go through and cut it. Joe was bushwhacking the whole way through that. He ended up taking his paddle apart and using one as a paddle. <laughs> Yet he's in the low position, so it was almost impossible. Where I just sat up, had my single blade paddle, and paddled away, and did it comfortably. That's the reason I don't like relying on this. I don't know why people don't always bring a second paddle. You should always have a second paddle. If you're on a, a backcountry trip or a remote wilderness trip with one paddle, could be as simple as you get caught up in some waves, you drop that in the water and you get separated from it. Well, how are you going to catch up to the thing? I always have, in my key weights with key weight and 14, in the past I always had my double blade and I would use that when I got windy especially. And then I had my single blade, which I love to use in those smaller streams and rivers. And also if I did drop a paddle, and I've done it twice I think, where I have to catch up to the paddle <laughs> with the canoe and I use the single blade for that purpose. So I always recommend having two paddles on board. And it's simple, you just gear tie it to the thwart and to the front handle and I found it just stays there the whole trip even if I'm portaging, it doesn't come out, it stays there until I need it. But I've got it rigged in such a way I can slip it out quickly and put it into use. So I'll be looking at uh, this, I'll probably order probably the lighter weight one. Now what Scott was saying, this canoe is wider and taller than the Key Wayden, so uh, the other so this will be better for getting to the water. But the other thing it, I didn't quite like about that, I did like the aggressive uh, steep angle entry. It gave me more control and more power, but you raise this paddle up into the air like that, that water's dripping down on you. And when you really lean into it, that's above your head or above your lap, you get, you're soaked by the, within an hour, you're soaking wet. So this keeps the paddle blades out over the, over the water. So, we got a lot of questions about people wondering, you know, the, whether to choose between a solo canoe or a tandem canoe and what you're looking for and, and how to choose. Um, obviously, tandem canoe, meaning at least two people in two seats. The pros of this, obviously, it's a larger boat, more volume, you can take more stuff with you. The difficulty can become, if you want to do a lot of solo paddling, generally with a tandem canoe, you're kind of putting a band-aid on the issue or, or kind of working around by having to use a tandem boat for solo purposes. It can still be done, it can be done well, it's just if you find yourself paddling solo a lot, a lot of people end up gravitating towards a true solo canoe. With a tandem, uh, to solo paddle, generally speaking, you sit in the bow seat and you face backwards. However, it depends on the shape of the boat. Some boats are meant to do that and some aren't. This particular boat isn't meant to do that. So if you were just going out for a little rip around the lake, you'll be fine. I wouldn't want to go on an extended trip doing that because this boat is designed to go forwards as an asymmetrical design as opposed to a symmetrical boat like a traditional prospect. Mm -hmm. um, You've seen me, I'll sort of up here of me paddling a, my prospectors, the two wooden canvas boats I have. I'll actually sit in the center of the boat kneeling, there's no seat there, and I'll heel it all the way over so there's barely any boat actually in the water and you can, you can turn that thing on a dime. The um, problem with that, all of that is you get a wind coming in, it's really hard to steer. And here's a trip that I did three years ago on the French River. I was paddling into uh, 60 kilometer an hour winds upstream for 35 kilometers in one day, up river and upwind in that thing. And I was constantly fighting the bow. So like that's uh, again why the solo boats too, they a little lower profile, a little more sleek. And then the comfort too being another factor yeah. is not everyone can or wants to kneel for that long. Um, if you're doing that for days on end and depending on the, the state of your knees and stuff, it's not always that comfortable. So that's when people start looking at alternative options of sitting in the bow seat facing backwards or going with a, a true solo. You see these beautiful pictures of guys uh, alone in a canoe sitting in the, uh, uh, in the uh, stern seat, <laughs> sitting up a little bit. It's not the way to paddle a canoe. You try to do that, even slightest breeze, and you're just spinning around. And that's actually, if you go to Canoe Lake and Algonquin Park, you'll watch that every day. Of the year. <laughs> Watching somebody try to do that, and they'll get blown right back to the beach almost every time. It's it's very very frustrating if you're new to canoeing. These these uh, solo boats are, I mean, they're a little less stable. You get more stability with these big boats, more carrying capacity, but the little ones are much more maneuverable for a solo, even inexperienced paddle.